Okay, guys, welcome back to part three of this Poland Super 31 chainsaw restore. And these are 54 millimeter, which are a little bit too big. And you can kind of see on the edges there, the notches. That's not the notches that I want. I've got to cut notches on the back side of this because of the way the piston indexing pins are on the back side. So uh, what I have to do first is I have to trim these down, the ring gap, so that the ring fits in there perfectly. And what we're looking for is four thousandths of an inch per one inch diameter is kind of the rule. So this is a two inch piston. So we're looking at eight thousandths of an inch. And uh, I have two rings here. This one's the brand new one that I haven't touched. The other one I have touched. I've been cutting on it already just enough where it goes into the cylinder. And you can see there, you know, there's the ring gap. And it's too small right now, which is good. And so we're just going to inch it along very carefully not to break the ring using our, and I am doing this free-handed with a Dremel. You know, of course you can use the tool to do it and get a good square cut edge, but so far this is pretty, uh, pretty clean cutting. Just got to take a little bit off at a time. put it in here and measure it. You can't see this part, but I'm going to put it back over here on this piston to push it in like that. I just, I just pushed it on the motor to push the piston in. So now I've got a little bit more of a gap and I'm going to take my feeler gauge, which is eight thousandths. I'm looking to get this thing in there and it's still not going. So I'm just going to, oh, it almost went just about there, just about there. I can almost get it in. I'm just going to barely touch it. Just a little bit. Put the ring back in. Bring it over to my piston. Push it in. Measure again. Right there. All right. So that that right there is spot on perfect. Okay, so that's only half of the battle. That's just getting the ring gap squared. What we have to do now is we have to take another bit and I have to round out the back side because that's where the indexing pin on the piston goes. So the first one came up pretty good. Let's see if I can focus here where you can see. It's got the notches on it. Pretty happy with that. I ended up using two different Dremel sizes. I used the bigger one and then I used a small one to kind of get up in the box of it there, but that came out pretty good. Okay, now we got our rings and our gasket here. We're going to put these rings on the piston, the notches on this side. Piston's already cleaned up as well as this surface. So I'm going to put a little bit of two-stroke oil on these. I don't have to worry about which side goes up because the notch is in the back. 
we're just going to very carefully walk them on, you know, one at a time, not doing too much, or you'll end up breaking them. Easy does it. There's the first one. And there is the second one. It actually, on some rings, it does matter which side goes up first. And when in doubt, if it's got writing on it, the writing goes up. And I mark these with little black dots so that I knew which side went up. A little bit of two-stroke oil on the cylinder. As you saw earlier, I hand honed this just with some sandpaper to create some cross hatching. Actually, came out pretty good. One, one more look at that, so that's good to go. And then made sure these ports in here are chamfered so they don't catch these rings, especially a little bit on this outer lip here. All right, and then we're going to use our ring compressor. Um, this makes it a million times easier. I was making a little bit of a rookie mistake. I need the pinch to be on the ring gap end so I can better control these things. I'd also forgotten to put my gasket on, so now all that's squared away. We're going to jiggle it just a little bit till we feel it catching in those indexing pins and you want just enough edge on the top to get your piston started and then you just let the piston drive it down like that you'll feel it go into place and there we go now we're just going to push it all the way down and put, the, put our bolts in. I'm actually going to look down in there and make sure those things are right. rest of this is just going to be uh, putting it back together. So more than likely, I'm going to fast forward you through this so I'm not wasting too much of your time.
I'll find that little spring later. But meanwhile, I just made a little stand-in strap out of baling wire to hold that in place, which I think will be fine for now. And then next thing I need to do is I got a, I lost the little wire that connects this to the throttle here. That's spring loaded and is working. So I just need something to push down on it. So it's got to be pretty heavy gauge. I think this may work. I'm going to try it, but it may bend. That'll work. It goes all the way down, opens all the way up and closes. Gonna put the bar and chain back on, but before I do that, I'm gonna clean the groove in this bar out real good. And I'm just using a piece of gasket material. Put this bar and chain on here. You wanna make sure, so the engine's rotating this way. So you wanna make sure your sharp part of your chain is going in the right direction. Blade facing forward. Get in there. There it goes. Got our bolts that go on the back. Nuts, I mean. Don't want to get it too tight, just enough. All right, fellas. Well, there she is. She's all put back together. No parts left over. And I even gave her a little shot of pre-mix in the old spark hole and after a couple of pulls, she sparked right up for just a second. So that's a pretty good sign. We're going to give her some gas here and uh, take her outside and get her running.